speech, my body language, the, I'm moving my hands a lot. That's my art. And everyone needs to find out their own art and develop it. I don't want my students, I don't want people around me to copy me and be like me. It doesn't work that way. You find out what works for you and do that and develop that into your USP. So there are two things that lie at the center of our lives. We, are, we want to understand the patient's illness by understanding the patient. So if you don't know the person through and through, it's very difficult to find out why someone is unwell, why this person has come up with this problem and how you're going to make the patient feel better. So as being a family physician, my almost 20 years of experience that the patient and the patient's illness, they are not separate things. They are together, they're indivisible. So without understanding the person, we cannot take care of the person. So just like other artists, it's, it's a, the, this work is a part of our life. The life enriches us. We, it's really very, very difficult to say, where do we start, where do we begin? Where, do, where am I a family physician and where am I just a friend? Where am I a doctor or where am I a counselor? It, it's going on, it's going on. So we must be truly educated. We need to know our craft, our clinics, our books very well, but we need to have an overall understanding of everything else too. So scientists, artists, they come together. And uh, uh, sorry, I'm looking there. My son just came back from his school and he's wondering what my, my mom is doing. <laughs> so that's my family kind of peeking into the picture. So we need to seek life as a whole and enrich every bit of our life. And how am I satisfied being a family physician? So Sir William Osler, he, I believe he was the greatest clinician ever, said that the good physician treats the disease, the great physician treats the patient who has the disease. So I just said that as a whole, not the disease, not the illness, not the organ, we are going to treat the person who has come to us. We have the privilege of knowing the patients and building these relationships. That's where we come in. That's where our network, our database, everything works. So it's the only specialty that allows us to treat everyone in the family, all the generations, the baby who's just born, the baby's mother, the baby's grandmother, the baby's great grandmother. I, I'm able to treat all of them with my knowledge in geriatrics, with my knowledge in pediatrics that I get from family medicine and everything in between. I should be able to look after everyone and help everyone get the right care, the correct care and treat them. So as we are getting more and more technologically advanced, the whole concept of medicine is going online and bots and AIs, they're all coming into the picture. But the good doctor-patient relationship, the human being, here, here, my heart, my brain, that can't be replaced. At least till date, I don't think any machine or any bot can replace my feelings. I don't think it can replace the way that my knowledge can expand. So we can never ignore the importance. So during COVID, I was the busiest and I still am. And that's filtering through and that's going on. It's because people have realized that we are there, we are required. So although there are apps these days to tell us, okay, you need to eat this, you need to do that. There are uh, apps that give you information about your health. There's Google Babaji, which we all love and care for so much. But then how do you know which part of Google Babaji is important? Please uh, give me a moment. I need to answer a call. Hello. So, yes, I'm back. Sorry, my family is coming in, which they should. Our family should always be a part of our life. So how are we relevant? We have engaged strongly with the pandemic, especially by building networks, networks locally, with our national groups, with our international groups, 
with all the memberships and fellowships that we have, we have been together. We have been working and helping out everyone. We have built the networks with Wonka. We've had webinars to address COVID-19. We have worked closely with WHO and we are still doing that. So we have taken on the challenge of caring for everyone with chronic diseases through telemedicine, home delivery, what not. We've done everything possible. So everyone else in our team has been engaged with restructuring health services. Some of our doctors have uh, built up field hospitals out of nothing. They have changed convention centers into COVID care centers. And this pandemic has taught us how important the primary care physician is. Without the primary care physicians, the specialists, the super specialists, they don't know what to do. There was a time when I was working 24 seven and my friends who are specialists in their own fields, they were calling me up and asking me, okay, how come you're so busy? I don't have any patients right now. What do I do? So we, we wrote them in, we told them for a few months, for a few days, become a family physician because they all have MBBS, they can do it. We'll train each other, we'll work together and where you are needed. So the gynecologist friend of mine, she calls me up. So I tell her, okay, remember your MBBS days and I'll train you a little bit more and we'll work together. And then when a pregnant lady comes to me with COVID, you take over everything else. So that's how we work together so beautifully. So I'm gonna try and conclude now. In my opinion, it's one of the hardest specializations. It's not the hardest. There are so many other things, but I feel that as a family physician, we have to know a little bit about everything. You cannot turn your patient away when they come to you with something obscure and say, oh, ye mera nahi hai. you go to so-and-so. You can tell your patient, okay, this is a little rare or something little new to me. I will look this up and we'll discuss this down the line. But basically, it's you have to keep yourself updated all the time. So it's so much research oriented, it's so important. It's not easy to differentiate a viral illness from a sepsis, a tension headache from a brain tumor or a panic attack from a heart attack. So that's where again, we are so important. We can't ignore a patient, one. <laughs> we can't ignore a patient, but then at the same time, we can't overuse resources that are important for other things and try to send everyone for a CT scan and MRI and then the person who actually needed it doesn't get it. So the rigorous training that we get, the certifications that we do, the CPDs, the continuing professional development that we do as an organization, as an individual, and the reflective practice. So the, I, I saw many patients today, I'm going to sit in the evening and, and write down who all I saw, and then later on think, what did I do? Could I do, have done anything different? Do I need to call this patient back? Do I need to send an email to this patient and tell him that, okay, we need a follow-up or you need to read up on this. So this is what I do. This is how I work. And there's peer review. There are times when we put messages on our community, the society groups, on AFPI groups, on Wonka groups and ask them that, so I've seen this, I've done this. Do you think we should have done otherwise? And that's how we continuously improve our quality of care. So a skilled family physician can understand ideas, concerns, and expectations. That's eyes. We can understand what the patient is thinking. What is he worried about? And what does he or she expect from us? And that's how we can deal with the uncertainty of medicine with Elan. Because medical science is uncertain. Everything develops, everything changes. Things that we read 20 years back in our books, there some of them are obsolete. Some of the things that my father read is coming back. So these things we need to keep on updating ourselves, keep on being aware, keep on talking with juniors, with seniors, not feel that we are better. We No one is better than anyone. Everyone is unique in any field that you are. So thank you.